Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. Uh, just an update. Phyllis is home from the hospital, so that is good. So we continue to hold her in our prayers as well though, through the week. A couple of announcements or just reminders because they're all in your announcements. The Bible study, the Genesis will be tonight on Facebook um, because I have a meeting tomorrow night, so I'm going to do it tonight instead. And then Wednesday, Ron and I will be leaving to head to Texas first uh, for, Aust or for Patrick's promotion to Chief Master, Sergeant Air Force. Uh, we believe there might be another promotion, but I can't talk about it right now. So we think there's another one happening. And then we will be heading to Phoenix, and then to California, and then we will be back. But I will still be doing the Monday, Monday and Wednesday Bible studies. Um, I have to make sure I know what time zone I'm in, because as I head west, as we head west, We'll have to, I'll have to think about what time zone I'm in so I get it on the right time. But those are still going to happen. Pastor Doyle Karst will be here next Sunday with you all. Uh, Pastor Karst was serving at Cornerstone in Beatrice. He is now retired, but he is the president of our uh, Heartland District. So he will be here with you next week, and then the week after, David will be handling worship. Please don't forget about those announcements that are upcoming. Uh, September is Salem's Month to serve the food pantry from about 2.30 to 4.35 in Marysville. So if you can come on Thursday afternoon, please come because we do need help uh, doing that. Uh, the highway sale is coming up, so save your items for that highway sale as well. And I think that's kind of, always the offerings are next week, so I think everything else you know, just a reminder, I'll be sending out the weekly email and that kind of thing with those announcements as they come through as well. Uh, if there are any prayer concerns or if someone gets sick or that kind of thing, please call me or email me or whatever. Um, I am not that far away. I know it, it sounds crazy when I say that, but I'm not. So um, if there are prayer concerns, if something happens, if people need me, I am still available. Uh, Ron and I will either drive back or I will hop a plane and come back if we need to. So do not hesitate to call me. Okay, that is so important. Um, I can do a lot of things via email or via phone calls while I'm gone. So, and it's fine. I, I will tell you I still have meetings that will be by Zoom that I'm going to still be doing as well throughout the week or throughout the two weeks. So, um, there we go. Okay. I think that's the announcements that I know of and the prayer concerns I know of. And so let's stand as we begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call to our being servant of the Church of Christ and bind his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing in the bold book, hymn number 363.
let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. the rulers, the 
against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. Here in this the second reading. <laughs> I think I needed the kids to figure out. It's kind of like 
For any of us that have a smartphone, if you want to know how to use your phone, you don't hand it to Grandma and Grandpa. Don't you hand it to Sophie and Hattie and yeah, those are who we hand those things to. We don't try to do, because this isn't going to make sense. These directions, to me, are just about as confusing because I have to figure out the pictures the one times and ten times or two times or whatever, or four times. Well, and then it says you are do not aim it at eyes or face. Done. And I'm going to try to figure it out right now. I just don't know. And maybe that's what the words sounded like to the disciples. Maybe the words that Jesus has been talking about with the bread of life through this last four weeks have sounded confusing. And now they're actually being called to task. Are you going to believe? And only Simon Peter says yes, because we know that you are the one, that through you there is life, and life eternal, life to be given, on to eternity. You see, like these directions and making this little thing, it didn't make sense, maybe, to those who didn't understand what the words were all about. Maybe we needed the rest of the story. Maybe we actually needed to look back at Ephesians and we needed to say, well, wait a minute. Maybe those words are even confusing about needing a breastplate of righteousness. We needed to be protected and our heart needs to be protected. Maybe as I'm looking at those little pieces, maybe that's a different story. But maybe, and make our feet ready. Make our feet ready. But they were supposed to have a shield of faith to protect and to give. Because there will be flaming arrows from the one who will try to take our lives from us. We need a helmet of salvation. We need the sword of the Spirit, and we need the Word of God. Maybe that's the important part. That if I understood maybe these pictures, I'd get the story. And we need to pray often and keep our minds alert. What I think that happened with the disciples was they thought they understood and had head knowledge. They thought they got it. Now I have a little chuckle when I, when I got this little gadget. I was at camp school with a bunch of other scouters. Now the interesting part was, those of us that were probably over 60 looked at the box and did exactly what I did. In fact, I hadn't even opened mine. But those that were in their 20s and 30s opened them up and put them together immediately. And got it. Maybe that's the same thing for you and me. Maybe the words that we speak don't make sense sometimes. See, I think our faith is more about our actions and what do we do with it. I need to know the words, yes. I need to study often. Study for church is not about what happens in one hour a week. It's about how do I live my life the other times when no one can see me or see you and me in any of us. See, it is that you and I are ambassadors in chain and we have to fearlessly tell the story. Well, I think that what the disciples were really struggling with was that they they needed to hear the words. They needed the confession of faith that you and I do every Sunday and come together in that confession in the beginning of worship is the most important thing we can do. It is saying we are human and we fail. We've made mistakes and we've erred. And before God and the company, 
that we have gathered together and the saints in heaven we are forgiven and renewed to go about this next week and probably make mistakes again because that's called being human it's called being the child of god that we are see i think i think and i pray often all the time about what are we as god's children who do we get excited about telling the story to the phone calls the emails or the texts that i received during the week are phenomenal in learning more about who we are i mean it just dawned on me thursday when i was at the food pantry i guess i had made some connections of some family members and there were some people at the food pantry working on thursday and someone said something about that they were family to someone else and i finally just turned around and in the in the in joyful glee said what i know about this community is that we are all related because i can't figure out who's related to who so i assume everyone is probably related and somehow all of our stories start to tie together i mean when my friends in kansas your members in kansas city you know my friends in kansas city the world gets a whole lot smaller when we all realize that I was baptized in the church that many of your members went to in Kansas City. The world got smaller and yet larger at the same time. See, what Jesus needed the disciples to understand, and he needed to point them clearly that it was in him and in God's word that we stand together as brother and sister no matter what happens in life. No matter where we are in our journey and in our story, you and I are connected because of that. But then as I read the, the Ephesians text, there's always someone to help us out. And that's why putting on the breastplate and the shoes and the sword and the, and the helmet, you can't arm yourself without the help of another. I mean, worship doesn't happen just because I say I want it to happen. Well, it happens because we come together collectively and we work on things together. We plan together. We and surely work on music together. I mean, I'm lucky. I kind of have the script for the year of what knowing what lessons are going to be out there. But what else do we add? What else do we need to bring about as part of that? What else and who else becomes part of the story? What does our community need? When we have Bible school or we have community services, why are we doing those except to bring people together? Because, see, there are people who could figure out how to put this silly little thing, this little toy, together. I can't do what I could, I guess, if I mess with it. It's probably not high on my list to have to do. But see, what I know is that you and I are called as the children of God to arm ourselves with the word, to pray often, to read scripture daily, and then to live the life that God's given us, whatever that looks like. See, I treasure the, the moments that we all have that we share and sit at the table maybe together, or a phone call together, that we talk about whatever's going on. And we get beyond maybe just the, how are you doing today? But we get to, I'm hurting and I need. I need something to help me through a journey. As we come back to school, it's a whole new journey again and a year that we don't know what that's gonna look like, do we? Right now, for us, I think it 
it's okay. I think we're doing fine. The schools that my sister-in-law are at are already out for now. They've already had to take two weeks out. There are schools across the country that are already facing the opportunities that we didn't think would happen this year. How do we pray for our teachers, for our counselors, for our administrators who have to make tough decisions? How do we continue to hold our EMS and our military in prayer in the midst of conflict? How do we help those in Haiti who have nothing again? Except to know that as Jesus says to the disciples, and as Peter confessed, we believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. We know that we have to come to you no matter what, because you are the one who holds life in the palm of your hand. It is. That is where we go no matter what. We go to each other in those times of need and hurt and pain and agony, of joy, of celebration. This is where we come because it is in God's hands. Let us pray. Jesus, Holy One of God, who shall we go but you? Where else can we find the words of eternal life? Where else can we receive grace upon grace? Who besides you has suffered for our sins? Who besides you offers living water and heavenly bread? Precious Jesus, to you alone we turn for salvation from our sins, for deliverance from our bondage. In you alone we find life as it was meant to be. No one else but you, O Lord, will satisfy the longing of our soul. Amen. We will sing hymn number 619.
was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. To the people of God gathered here and throughout the world, we offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all people in need. O oh God of all, bring peace to the world. Give comfort to those in Afghanistan who are under attack. And protect those in Haiti from the storms and the earthquakes. For those on the East Coast who are experiencing a hurricane, let them know your presence. In your name we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer <laughs> for our country, Heavenly Father. Continue to give wisdom to all who lead and help them with discerning hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our community, Lord of peace, be with all in our community. Guide all leaders, all pastors, all workers to know your love. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. oh, for all who suffer, for Stan and Debbie, Peggy and Donna, Jennifer and Rebecca, Dawn and all others we lift in our hearts. Let them know your healing presence for caregivers, for family. Let them know your love, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh God, we know that you are a mighty God. We know that you have come, that each of us may have life. And so, Lord, we ask and we pray that all of our concerns come to you. Give us comfort and peace. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we come into all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with receiving our offering.
worship you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.